MyID Travel is more than just a booking site for standby and non-rev flight. It's also a great tool to plan your future trip. And in this video, I will show you the basics and a tiny bit more. So let's go and let me show you around. Hi, and welcome to my Traveling Sabine channel. I'm Sebastian and I've been a flight attendant for quite a while now. My videos are about my thinking process behind the preparation of my past and future trip. I'm also talking about the tools I use for the planning of these trips and many other subjects about being a good little pious traveler. So something for everyone. All right, back to my ID travel first. And every time you'll get on the site, you need to click like and subscribe. Nope, that's my channel. Sorry about that. Oops. <laughs> anyway. If you're in a hurry and just want to book a new flight, you just need to click new flight. And once you will have a book your new flight, you'll see it up here in this flight section where you'll be able to manage and start the refund process for those flights. We'll take a look at that section a bit later. But first, let's go and check the often forgotten but really important travel info section. This is where you'll be able to see the rule for each airline you have a deal with. And please check with your own airline to make sure with which airline you have a deal with. It's not always clear. Also note that when selecting leisure, you're going to see the standby rule. And if you select duty, you're going to see the non-rev or jump seat rule for that airline if you have a deal with them. Okay. Just for fun, let's go and select the Air France standby travel info where, like I've already mentioned, you can find a lot of information about booking, canceling, refund, and other stuff. Note that you might have to click on these expense arrow on the side to see the actual information, like here for the booking timing, where it's written that you can book up to 60 days in advance. On Air France? Wait, I thought it was 30 days days. Yeah. Anyway, well, just go and take a look at all these information before booking anything. Speaking of booking, let's try to book something just for fun. A few months ago, I started a trip around the world by flying first from Montreal to Florida. And this is where it got funky. So let's try to recreate that funkiness. And as a bonus tip, you will see why my ID travel can be a great travel tool if used properly. So, new flight, and we are usually already selected. I'm a Mr. Mail, and if you wanted to add someone from your beneficiary list, you just have to click on the checkbox beside their names and answer those two same questions. And if you wanted to, or could, Travel with a travel partner? Well, this is where I'd add that buddy of mine. So, for example, I'd like to travel with Miss TK, Tiny. Then add and continue. Great. So, right up here, you can make sure that you have the right amount of travelers by clicking on this link. And in my case, I realized that I can make my traveling koala travel in my backpack. So let's remove her from the traveler's list. Is she mad? I don't know. I cannot see her. Yeah. So I made my way to Fort Lauderdale and I want to keep going to Brazil. One of the airline we have in our list is the Brazilian company Azul. And Azul flies out of Fort Lauderdale. We are going to try first to go to Sao Paulo. And Sao Paulo main airport code is Guru. Let's add a fictitious date like uh, February 29. And before I keep going up here, you can select if you want to book a one way, a return, a multi leg trip. Now, here's a good tip for you travelers. Often the airline, for a reason or another, are going to suggest that you book one leg at a time. Usually it's a good suggestion and also it's part of their role. But I'll show you later why it's not always such a good idea. Let's launch the search for this uh, one leg flight from Fort Lauderdale to Sao Paulo by clicking find flight. Mm. 
Ew. Right away I see red, and it's all triple stops, which, as we all know, is not great. Okay, let's look at one result by clicking on it, and then on this new page, click continue, and oh, what is this red warning square? I do not know. Okay, I do know, but let's investigate that in a few minutes. But first, let me show you a good little trick that might save you time and money. Earlier, I used the GRU airport code for Sao Paulo and got three triple stops as, as a result. Now, let's change that for the name of the city, Sao for Sao Paulo. You can do that for big city like Paris, London, and uh, Tokyo. And... uh all big city and boom we have one more option so four option which I shouldn't be able to show you because of that ominous red square we saw earlier but one of the trip has a yellow line on the sign and I do promise I will come back later to explain these colors okay so let's go and check what that Fort Lauderdale VCP is VCP is another international airport that serves Sao Paulo called Viracopos Campinas I guess that's how you pronounce it since it's in Portuguese yeah. by the way I'm hiding the price on the side because this is a YouTube video and well you know Okay, so I won't keep going even though it's kind of showing me that I could select that flight. But let's go investigate that red square we saw earlier. So, let's go back to the travel info page and let's look at the Azul section. And first line, they have an embargo for all flights leaving from Paris, Lisbon, Orlando and Port Lauderdale. That was not great to learn a week or so before my departure. So, plan B. Let's pick another airline. I know that Delta flies out of Atlanta to Sao Paulo, but let's use United because we're going to have more options with them. Okay, it's still me traveling and during my trip, I actually went to Orlando first, so let's put that in. And then Sao Paulo, still on February 29. And here we go. So we have from Orlando to Newark to Sao Paulo, from Washington to Sao Paulo, from Houston to Sao Paulo, and finally from Chicago to Sao Paulo. And it's green all the way, baby. Speaking of which, colors, what do they mean? Well, in the previous version of the My ID Travel website, they had a legend for these colors saying something like green meant nine or more. Um, so it could be 59 or just nine. Yellow was between four and eight seats and red meant three or less seats left. I might be wrong, but it was about that. But as many of us have realized, these numbers... Yeah, Especially since they don't include other standby and non-rev listed. What is my thought process when I see these colors? Well, green should be my plan A, yellow should be my plan B, and red, forget about it. And then I use an app like Staff Traveler, which I believe is the best one, to get the actual loads and the number of standby. Okay, back to our booking. So, since I actually did my own research, I did learn something interesting. United flies from Houston to not only Sao Paulo, but Rio. So, Houston has two options for me to get to Brazil, which is always better than just one, obviously. And since there's two green lines, this double stop should be our plan A for our flights from Orlando to Houston to Brazil. Now. Let me explain the whole booking double stop versus booking each flight individually conundrum. Let's pick these two flights. And again, I won't show you the actual pricing, but let's talk taxes and fees, which can vary by a good margin. So the taxes and fees on these double stops are about $30 US. Now, if I pick each flight individually, so Orlando to Houston, 
the taxes and fees are about $15 US. Let's go and check the Houston to Sao Paulo. You can quickly switch the departure and arrival so that you don't have to retype the name again by clicking those two arrows. And uh, let's put group back in and select uh, the right flight. And wow, it's almost 29 US in taxes and fees alone for that one leg. So to book the double stop in one reservation would save you about 14 to 15 dollars US. It's a lot of money for me. And of course, only do these double stop booking when the two flights are with the same airline. Or even then, some airlines don't like it when you book a domestic flight and an international flight together. Like I'm doing right now, they don't even like to do two international flights. So go and take a look at their rules. And by the way, after you're done watching this video, on go on my ID travel itself and play around with it and look at one day earlier, one day later, and it might suggest to you a different way to get somewhere. And don't forget to do your own research. Like you can ask Google for a where we fly map for each airline you want to use, which are usually very useful, but not as plentiful as before for some reason. You can also search for airline operating from an airport or ask for the departure or arrival board for that specific airport. I personally like to go backward and I look at my actual destination and ask Google which airline flies there and from where. And then I go to that where and so on and well, you get the gist. So like I said, play with it. Don't forget to look at other dates because you might miss an opportunity for a good plan B, C, D, and the letter goes on. And you could even find a better plan A. But for now, let's finish this booking by clicking on continue. We'll then answer a few questions and pay for the standby ticket. It's pretty self-evident, to be honest. And for your information, not all airlines use the same type of payment process, so be ready. Great, the booking is done. And that will bring us to the flight page. The flight page is where you'll manage all of your bookings. And in this page, you'll find the very useful booking code or locator number or PNR. The ticket status column is kind of a mystery to me, but I guess it doesn't really matter whether it says issued or use. Maybe someone in the comment down below can help me with that one. And then, in this column, ticket number. If you click on one of the ticket number, that's where you'll find all the info for that specific ticket. And of course, the most important button of them all, the refund button. Speaking of refund, during my trip around the world, I did not make two of my standby flight. One was on Swiss from Sao Paulo and the other one was on Gold, 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 Gold from Orlando. Sorry about that. So when I got home, I went on my ID travel and asked for the refund. I got the Swiss one very quickly and I'm still waiting for the gold one. Let's go investigate that one too. First, let's click on the ticket number link and you can see right away there's some green box telling me to do something. All right, chill man, fine. The thing I lazily forgot to do was to check the goals travel info page for their refund process. So let's go and take a look. And oh, what a surprise. I also needed to send them an email directly, which I'm going to do soonish because I wanted to show you what happened when an unfinished refund process happened. Well, folks, I believe I've given you a lot of information about my ID travel and how to use it, not just for booking flights, but also to help you somewhat plan your future trips. By the way, in this video, I will give you some pointers on what to expect while traveling standby or non-rev. I will also come up with a bunch of videos about traveling preparedness, so please. And don't forget to leave a comment or question down below. Thank you. Until next time, happy travel, my friend.